this hay spear doesn't tilt back very far. I need to modify it. But for the time being, I think I'm going to put the hydraulic top link on here and then I'll be able to adjust it on the fly. All right, I got the hay spears on the tractor, both the front and the back. I'm gonna run out to the hay fields. I'm gonna start hauling all of the bales back and I'm gonna stage them up toward the front of the property, get them all laid down up there. And then after we got them all off the hay field, I can go ahead and get the bale wrapper back out and we're gonna go ahead and wrap those bales. Probably mark these bales this time. Um, maybe, you know, that it was second cut, whether it was off the east field or the west field. And then I'm gonna mark that one bale that had, um, that was a little high moisture in the center. We'll, we'll mark it as well. And we'll see how that turns out in a few months when we open it back up. But I need to get started. It's a, it's a cloudy day. It looks a lot cloudier today. Not supposed to have any rain. It's just not as sunny as it has been. But I'll tell you what, a little bit of relief from the sun. It's got some cool weather. This is gonna be a nice day to be outside. The no go. Oh, I'm hitting the wrong thing. get the hang of this. Doesn't want to quite go. Not the right angle. Down a little more. There we go. Oop, wrong way. Take me a little bit to get the hang of it. So I kept on looking at the sky and to me it just looks like rain. So I pulled out the weather app and I looked and there is rain on the radar. It looks like it's going to be here in one to two hours. This kind of depends on how you estimate it. So it looks like I'm under a little bit of a time crunch. I've got all of the bales off of the east field and then that very last one down there. 
that's the one that was high moisture in the middle. So I need to go get all the ones off the other field. And hopefully we can start wrapping these before it rains. So I'm probably just going to have to not film so much and just get it done. I just finished getting all of the bales up here off of the field. I'm going to leave the 2515 here. I'm going to use it to load bales. I'm going to go back get the uh, T654, get the bale wrapper on it, try to get it all ready to go. Unfortunately, it is already starting to sprinkle. There we go. Well, we'll just go ahead and we'll start wrapping bales if it start if it starts to truly rain instead of just sprinkle we may end up having to stop These branches were too low for the tractor to get under. Pop the little guide wheel out. That just sits in there by gravity. It doesn't pin in there. I may have to change that. Somehow I seem to have beat the rain. It showed, like on the radar, it showed green over us like it was actually raining here, but it never did more than sprinkle. And it got real dark a minute ago. I thought for sure it was gonna pour on us right before we finished. But luckily we got it all done. Everything's wrapped up. I can go put the tractors away. Well, it's raining more now than when we were wrapping. I'd say we got done just in time. 
yeah, I don't know if it'll show up in the camera or not, but it is, it is raining now. Just starting to. We just finished like 10 minutes ago, so it's pretty good timing. So it's next day now, and I need to do a pasture move out here in this warm season forage. So I've put the livestock in a, in a different area, and I try to go out here and mow a path for the electric wire using our zero turn mower. But it started acting up on Rebecca the other day, so the engine's not running real good for some reason. And then this tall sorghum Sudan proved to be too much for it. I ended up uh, killing the mower at least once, and then it wanted to die a few times, so I had to give up trying to do it that way. That's the way we've done it every time since, but it's just too tall now. And I've put the, so then I switched gears. I've put the brush hog on the back of the 2515, and we're gonna head out in the field, and I'm 100% sure that this is gonna do the job, but we'll get out there, mow us a path, and get our temporary fence moved this morning. I may have her tightened a little too much. All right, before I move the animals in here, we'll just take a quick look. So this is where we've had them maybe like three weeks. And it's this is a sorghum Sudan warm season annual mix. And you can see it's finally about two feet tall. And every time we move, the next paddock is even taller. So then Really, if it's the same size area, they they can stay on it longer because there's just more and more forage every time we get to it. So if you look at how tall this is, it's already starting to seed out here. It's uh, There's a lot of forage here. And this is right where we spread the nitrogen. And then you compare it to this. This is just 20 feet away. And this is where we didn't get the nitrogen. You see how much difference the height is from there to here, it made a huge difference on how well this grew and how much forage there was. And this right here, this is the first two sections that we gave them. And you can see it's recovered and it's already all seeding out here. And this is what it looked like. It looked like this when we pulled them off. And I think this has probably been about six weeks now, close to that for recovery. And it's going to seed. Now, if we look at the middle of this field, we haven't used any of it. There's actually two different 
forages here. This first one closest to me. This one is, is millet, and then there's some forage sorghum in here, which is a, a shorter sorghum. And then back there, the taller stuff is all sorghum Sudan grass. And this is all stuff that I don't need to graze, and this is all something I can experiment with and try to either bale as hay or try to bale it as silage. So I've got the whole middle of this field is not even utilized at all. And this is just gonna be extra baleage probably by the time it's over with. And if you look at the very south end of this field, we're only using about half of it. We've got it fenced off for a pasture area and that's where the livestock is now grazing at, at the moment. And we'll end up moving them over here into this in just a second. So overall, I think we're grazing about a third of this, um, probably four out of the 12 acres. And then the rest of this is extra, right? So I'm gonna try my best to see if I can bale this some way, whether it's silage or, or hay, and then I can either try to sell it or we may end up just getting more livestock over the winter. If I've got this huge supply of hay built up, we may just end up getting some more livestock instead so we'll just have to wait and play it out and see what happens but this is a good problem to have moo cows come on Maya do you see it Ellie you see it you do oh here comes Maya she sees it so I didn't put up a back fence for this area yet I'm gonna let them eat on this and trample it down just a little bit because it's it's so thick that the sheep really can't see through it. So they'll prefer to stay on the edge until they start getting some trails and some stuff, you know, through there so they can see a little bit better. So I'm gonna leave this it, probably for a week before I back fence it. These steers are still skittish of me, so if I get on the other side of them, they'll probably move a little quicker. Come on, shorty. Well, I set out this morning to do this and it's taken me at least two hours. So I still got all the rest of the chores to do. All right, time to move. Everybody up. We're turning around today. Nope. Oh, I'm losing. Oh. Well, Bre Rebecca will appreciate that. <laughs> she don't like me carrying them full. Well, they're full now. Look out. So these chickens right here are seven weeks and one day old. And they are huge, huge chickens. So maybe here's a better look at how big these things are. They're huge. So we're gonna probably start processing these and you guys are gonna go off to freezer camp. So we'll probably just start with what we think are the biggest ones, which are typically the males. They have the, the darker 
bigger red comb on them. They're pretty easy to identify. And um, we'll probably just start there and start working on this that this week and start filling the freezer back up. Now these turkeys, I don't think they're quite ready yet. We probably ought to throw them on a scale sometime and just see where they're at. But they are usually take, you know, twice as long as a chicken at least. They probably take, well, probably close to 18 weeks or so before they're ready. So out here in the orchard, this tree back here, this was one of the peach trees. You can see there's not a single peach on it. Peaches are done with. And this is a gala apple tree. And these were good to eat like a week ago. They're, they're starting to fall off. I need to harvest these. Mm. They're really good right now. I do need to harvest them. And then we need to put them away. Or these are all gonna go bad or the bugs are gonna get them. So I really need to start picking apples. There's too many things to happen all at once. All right, I went ahead and I marked the bales that we wrapped. So the number two is for second cut. I put an E on the ones from the East Hayfield. That one had more weeds in it, so not as good a quality. I also put a circle around the one at the end that had the high moisture. And then I put a W on the ones from the West Hayfield. These are probably the best quality hay bales. And then everything else that's not painted, I know is from first cut. So I can already see that people are gonna drive by and they're gonna see these bright orange letters and numbers on here and they're gonna be curious what that means. So I, I bet me and Rebecca get asked several times before we end up using these up. So right after I got done doing the chores, I came out here and I cleaned out a couple refrigerators. Um, so I've got this refrigerator cleaned out. I, I washed it out, wiped it out. So the plan is the apples are ready in the orchard. So we need to harvest those. And since we don't have a root cellar, I figure refrigerator is the next best thing. So I've got the bin in the bottom and two shelves available in this. And we'll, so it's ready for apples when we go pick them. And then this one down here, I've got this, both of these are convertibles. So that you can be a fridge or a freezer. And this is too, and I got it cleaned out. I've got it all turned on and I switched it to refrigerator mode and that is because we're going to be butchering chickens this week. So after we butcher them, we can put them all in here and we can let them rest for uh, two, three days in the cold refrigerator before we shrink wrap them and freeze them. And that's supposed to um, help the meat tenderize a little bit before you freeze it. So this is all set up, ready to butcher chickens. This one's ready for apples and that's what we'll end up doing this week. I'm gonna probably wait for Rebecca so that she's here to help with those kind of things, but that's, I think, what our week looks like ahead, or at least a few days of it. So Rebecca's already left work and she's on her way home, so I think it's probably just a good time to say, quit for the day and get cleaned up. If I tried to start another project this late in the day, I'd end up working on it till seven o'clock tonight. So I think that's it, guys. I hope you guys have a great day. I'll see you in the next one.